Hello YouTube. Today we're going to cover Vagrant. Um, I want to talk about this because this is a great way to test your, your software, your code. If you want to set up a mini lab for using something like Salt or Ansible or um, you want to run up uh, a web server, you want to see how it will work in production on multiple uh, servers and, and see how you can deploy quickly and rapidly to your servers this is the way to go you can use vagrant and and basically vagrant is a scripting platform that uses some type of virtual infrastructure on the back end like virtualbox or vmware and for for this example i'm going to be using virtualbox so you actually have to follow up with one of my virtualbox videos on how to install virtualbox on your system and then you would come and install Vagrant. So right here, you would come in and select uh, download from vagrantup.com. And I'm just going to press download. When you get to this page, it's going to say download Vagrant. And you just come down and select your version of your operating system. If it's Windows, you do Windows 64-bit or 32-bit uh, and so forth. I have Debian. So I'm going to use 64-bit. And if you're curious, if you have Ubuntu already installed, you want to select the Debian version. And just save it as so. And then go through the necessary install procedures to install it. And we're going to go to download, CD, download for me. And I'm just going to do sudo dpackage just i vagrant six a dev and I just hit enter and then when you get inside of the vagrant file after you install it you want to try to create the de the the vagrant file actually. So I'm going to go to my vagrant directory that I created and just do make their vagrant. I've already created so I'm going to CD vagrant. And what you want to do is you want to download an image or a box as they call it from the vagrant website. So you can go find boxes from the home page and I'm just going to use Ubuntu Trusty 64 so I'm going to initialize my vagrant file based on that if you can't see that for you those of you on the um, mobile device if you can't see it I'm going to use this first one Ubuntu Trusty 64 it's the long-term support of Ubuntu server and I'm going to use that as the install box. So I'm going to do vagrant init. And then I'm just going to copy that name right here. Or I can select it if you want to see the steps. The steps come right here. They tell you what to do. Oh. If you want to create, you can do it two ways. You can create the vagrant file. And you can put that inside of a vagrant file and I'll show you that next, but we're just going to do new. So if you wanted to do it quickly and test it, well, actually I only need the second half. I'm going to minimize that and we'll switch over to this window. I'm going to do Ubuntu Trusty 64 and it's going to go ahead and install that. And I'm going to show you what's happening with my virtual box. Once I hit Vagrant up, and if you remember, let me show you this quickly. That's the next step here, right here, Vagrant up. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Hit Enter and bring VirtualBox up. And you'll start to see the box will come up. Mm -hmm. 
and there you go it already labeled it vagrant default you can see it's spinning up right here in this window it's creating a virtual key I mean a private key to log in and the username will be vagrant and it's showing you what port port it'll be on right here and how vagrant will be able to to actually interact with it and then if you were curious about okay where are the commands you just type in vagrant and you can get a list of the commands like that and then you'll pick which one, which one, uh, what do you want to do? If it's log in or anything like that. If you want the SSH to that box and log in, you would just do vagrant SSH. Since I only have one instance, it goes directly in. It shows, it looks just like an actual server because it is um, different from how Docker is just a container. It's an actual instance, an actual Linux instance. We can check how much RAM it's actually using from here, from this window. G, it's not enough, it's gonna be M, so it's 512 megs of memory allocated to this VM. And we can also view that right here from the virtual box window. And it says it right here, base memory is 512 megabytes, boot orders, hard drive. It has 40 gigs allocated to it. And you can do whatever you want to do. You want to do sudo apt update. You can get updates, grab the updates, just like a regular server. Uh, if you want to install something, sudo apt install in map you can do that if you want to run scans right and it installs just like a regular VM but just keep and you can also install multiple instances so right now I can bring up the file the vagrant file that was created with this and go here and I can actually in here let's delete all of this oops except for that we're gonna go GitHub page. All right, I'm gonna go to my GitHub page and I'm going to, I'm just gonna do a couple of hosts. I'm gonna make multiple hosts. I'm gonna destroy what we have and then I'm gonna launch multiple hosts. And you can see how quickly it'll do that. So if you wanna, you can, two ways of stopping your Vagrant servers, you can either do a halt if you want to suspend them or you can do a vagrant destroy to bring them all down I actually think I'm just going to do a halt let's try that let's see what we get clear then we're going to say vagrant up and it will see it start to bring up the four vms now keep in mind that you have to know how much ram you have in your instance i know i have 16 gigs of ram so i can spin up multiple instances but if you spin up four instances at 512 megs you're going to be around two gigs of ram so if you only have four to six gigs of ram on your uh laptop or desktop or whatever you're using Keep that in mind. You always have to keep in mind your actual resources. If we come over here, you see one, two, and then if you do what I just did 
and you don't actually bring it completely down the default will still linger around and hang around so you have to keep track of what you're actually doing because you can use up your resources really quickly but this is a good way to get up and running and have identical identical servers and you don't have to download a whole bunch of files wait for a bunch of stuff to happen and you can run things against all of these systems at the same time all right test different things push different things to each of them by messing with the actual vagrant file itself so let's see how that's doing we're starting on box number three And keep in mind, you don't have to use host one, two, three, four. You can name them whatever you want to do. If you want them to be web server, database server, anything like that, you can put in play an entire infrastructure. If you're curious about what other VMs or boxes are out there, just come. Is uh, vagrant up boxes uh, slash search, and you can look for different ones. We want all virtual box right now because that's what I'm using. We have Laravel, HashiCorp, CentOS 7. If you want to use CentOS 7, a different version of Linux. If you want a later uh, uh, or later or newer version of Ubuntu, you can use the 16.04 rather than 14.04, Debian, um, and so forth. All right, keep that in mind. I also saw that there's a GNS3 in here. I don't know how good it is. I haven't used it yet. Uh, it has only a few downloads. I think that'd be pretty neat for the Cisco folks or any networking uh, professional. I'm trying to focus on that. All right, we should be done now. Yeah, we're about done here. And voila, we have them all here. So we can do, oops, I don't want to add in the file. So we can do vagrant SSH host two. And voila, I'm in host two. I can see it's host two. Should have some type of different. IP addressing on the private network 1002.15. So I go out there and go host three. Yeah, on that. Let's see. Post name. You're all gonna have the same generic host name. All right, now, so if you want to log into each host, you just put host name, log in, and you'll be able to go into it. Again, if you want to update anything, they're all going to be using the same generic IPs. They're just going to be using different ports. Let's take a look at the path. Whatever directory you spin Vagrant up in, you're going to have the hidden Vagrant files and paths. It's going to say machines, and it'll show you each machine right here. This is how vagrant keeps track of all the machines that's host one two three four that's all the files and information all right then you can say let's see vagrant. let's see it helps you can see vagrant status For all of them, or we can do a specific one, host 
underscore two. And as it says right here, to stop this VM, you can run Vagrant Halt to shut it down forcefully, or you can run Vagrant Suspend to simply suspend the virtual machine. In either case, restart it again and simply run Vagrant up. And this is very, very useful if you don't want to completely tear down the entire thing and you just want to come back later or resume a suspension, you can come up and do resume. So I can do vagrant suspend host 2. You should be able to see that. See it's saved right here. The settings are saved. Now if I come back and do... Zoom. And it's starting to bring it back up, as we can see over here in the virtual box. And I, like I said, I love this because it's faster than going through all the steps of installing an entire operating system for each specific um, Linux server or Windows server, whatever you're trying to do. Uh, you can easily do it via this process and get you up a home lab or something even for work where you can test your uh, web application full out all right thanks comment subscribe if you have any questions or if you want to see something else done with vagrant uh, just let me know thanks